Thank you for tuning in to Cop with Comic. I'm Brian Cop, and we're here with Comic Ethan Victor. Ethan Victor, how the hell are you? I'm doing well. Thanks. Oh, good. Yeah, where can uh, where can people see you do stand up comedy on stage in New York City, and where can they find you online? Uh, you can find me online at uh, ethanvictor.com, Twitter, Instagram t- at t h e j victor. Oh, cool. I run a uh, monthly show on the Upper West Side at Whispers Ooh. Bar and Restaurant with Ooh. Vlad Kolos. Okay, and what kind of show is it? Like, who are you booking on that show? What can we expect if we go see the show Upper West Side at uh, Whispers, ninety fourth yeah. and Broadway? What's Whispers like? And where's the co- is it the co- is there a comedy room or? Uh, it's just a bar show, standard oh, cool. bar show. So we're uh, we're right in the middle of it. It's great. Yeah, I love Upper it. West Side's a no- nice location, right? It's it's great. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a phenomenal spot. Uh, we've been there for about a year and a half now. We started in wow. uh, September, October of okay. uh, 2018, I guess. Um, and what kind of comics are you booking for that? Are you uh, booking and hosting and doing spots yourself? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Good. So we have comics uh, kind of that we that we know around the city. Uh, I mean, being from LA, I book LA comics if they're if yeah, they're in town. That's cool. Uh, and then when you go back out to LA, they book you in there? Yeah. Oh, that's so it's, nice. It's You're kind good... of bi-coastal, right? A little bit. A okay. little bit. It's been, you know, when I was in school, I was going back and forth. Um, so I've like for breaks and stuff, uh, which was great just to like kind of get that experience yeah. uh, in, in both in both places. Because you started, I mean, although you grew up in L.A., you started stand-up comedy here in New York City, basically. Yeah. Okay. I uh, When I was 19, I took a freshman seminar uh, in undergrad in Northern California. I was, oh, cool. I was too afraid to take, <laughs> to like do stand-up. Okay. So I knew oh, that... the seminar was in the stand-up? Yeah. Oh, cool. So was it, it taught by anybody as being notable or not? Uh, uh, her name is uh, Karma Waltonen. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, she, she is a comic. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, Carmen. So, <laughs> um, so she, uh, I knew that the only way I was going to do it is if I got a grade. That was the only way that I was going to be oh, forced. Oh, that's cool. Um, and kind of why were you hesitant to go up without the grade? Just uh, you were younger? I was young, very okay. afraid of public speaking, oh, you know, okay. being vulnerable, this, that, and the other. Yeah, that's a uh, reason because it's kind of all of the above. Yeah. yeah. So this was, uh, this was a great start for me. I did it a little bit in college. And um, did you get over the fear of public speaking and the vulnerability or are you just kind of dealing with it uh, with jokes? Yeah. I I think okay. that's that's more of it at okay. this point is like I just try to shut it down for as long as I can that can and then once I'm on stage I'm like well here we go yeah. like this is this is it this is all I can really do now but the audience is laughing and you kind of know you know you know where they'll laugh and how often they'll laugh so it's not like you're you know the first time you get up there yeah. I imagine it's pretty uh the silence is deafening because you have no idea if they'll ever laugh Right. I think that's <laughs> as I get into like more vulnerable bits that's something that I've like really noticed is that I'm I don't know where the laugh. I know it's yeah. funny, but it's I haven't gotten comfortable enough with the timing yet to okay. know yeah. where that's supposed to happen. Because you're supposed to come. I mean, if you're being honest about you know a, a topic that's a little bit more sensitive. Mm-hmm. If you're a little bit too re- re- rehearsed with it, I would think you'd come off as insincere. Yeah. And it wouldn't be vulnerability that's getting the laughs. Right. Yeah. I feel like it's like scripted versus like yeah. how comfortable can you actually be? And I don't have – I'm still discovering that. I think that there are topics that I'm more comfortable talking about. Less vulnerable topics. Yeah. 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 So what, what are the vulnerable topics you're kind of talking about? I recently – I've been thinking – I've been working on this bit for the last week about my parents were teachers. Okay. Um, and I was – always afraid to kind of reveal their personal lives because on stage yeah okay. well no, no no as growing up oh. um just because like i knew that my friends were going to be in their classes uh, and i they were like not that they were celebrities but yeah, you know like, to them you yeah to other kids they are yeah i mean was, not necessarily in a good way they could be notorious right. celebrities right now. <laughs> <laughs> i think that it like that was kind of like what i was like teaching myself was like you can't reveal not who they are and I have a great yeah. relationship with them but like it was that like I wanted them to have their personal lives and keep them separate and like live in a way that like I didn't I didn't want to sell them out in yeah. some way and um, I like that because you can kind of toy with whether or not you told fake stories about their fake background right. like you know you tell your kids oh no yeah this uh, Mrs. Mrs. Victor she's uh, she's secretly a dominatrix or something <laughs> yeah but is it is that even vulnerable to you I mean you don't come off looking you know it's not particularly you know I like the topic mm-hmm. but it's not something that you should be worried about telling on stage because it's not you know it's actually making you come off as super considerate it's almost like a humble brag you know I think like so. I'm really I'm really feeling bad because I was so uh, considerate of my parents I think that it like 
the way that it kind of like manifested itself growing up though is yeah. that like I don't I do not talk about my personal life like to You're anybody. Wrong. You're at, wrong. At, not at all. Wow. I like and that I think is like what I'm trying to explore now is like the way that this bit is turning the what this tur- bit is turning into is more about like well when is it validated? When am I validated in being so closed off that nobody else that I won't talk about it. Yeah, what's it, what's the victory there? Yeah, I'm so closed off. Nobody knows who I am ever. Like I was, I was slightly proud of that one time when I, you know, I was dating a girl. I think we, I think we were exclusive, you know, pretty quickly. And she goes, I don't even know your last name. And I was like, Yeah, somehow that's cool. <laughs> yeah, right. I think that they, they they've been like wake up calls for me. I guess and like I was like I was seeing someone. Uh, a while ago and she's like I don't even know what you do it's something similar and I was like yeah like I just don't talk like I talk yeah. and I'm like you know I can like deflect in certain ways but and I even think- now as a comic though I think that you know a lot of people prefer to deflect that because they might get an idiotic response like tell me a joke right yeah. that's I, w- <laughs> I was just in LA and <laughs> tell me a joke somebody was uh, I was at a bar and my friend like I feel like your friends always want to tell everyone else that you're a comic sure it's a you- cool job it's cool if it like it's cool to not talk about, like... If other people, if you have a hype man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty sweet. Um, so we were at a bar, and, and my friend said something to someone. He was like, he was like yeah, this is, he's a comic. And she said to me, like, everyone else in L.A. And I was like, I don't even live here. Like, it's, it's, it's <laughs> I not... didn't even t- reveal that to you. My hype man did. <laughs> yeah. It's like, know your audience, hype man. Right. But it's cool that you have bi-coastal hype man. Yeah, I think it's, you know, I, I the support out there and the support here, really, just by everybody, I think. Everybody, like... It's just so great to kind of have that and like, you know, it, just being a part of the community and then and then watching people that aren't necessarily but are, you know, fans of just comedy and fans yeah. of laughter, the support that they give you. Um, and and kind of like, you know, people like people out there, I think Adam Mamawala just went out there and he said, um, you know, here like Aaron Berg did the record of 28 spots yeah. in a night. And I think Adam, you know, he felt he was being ambitious even doing four in L.A. because of all the traffic. Like what, you know, I know you started out here mm-hmm. in New York City, but kind of what can you reveal about the L.A., you know, just being a fucking sprawl? Because, I mean, my, my notion of LA is it's strip mall separated by traffic. Yeah. Is that accurate and what do people get wrong about LA but just by looking at documentaries or whatever? I think that there's more to LA than the way that we see it. Okay. I think the way that it's described, I think that it's like very sensationalist in one of two ways. Okay. Uh, and I think Jonathan Gold has a quote about Yeah, famous, I just saw that. Yeah. I mean, that's the one I'm kind of even going in there. I was like, yeah. ah, it's, it's strip mall separated by traffic. And there Jonathan Gold is yeah. sitting in traffic talking about the strip mall foe or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I think that he he highlights the city in a way that you don't get in a lot of sort of coverage there is yeah. more to it the the sensationalism of of Hollywood and yeah. what that means or the you know there that there are stories for four and a half million people that live there and we yeah. seem to get the extremes on either very oh. rich or very poor yeah and, but really it's more of a tapestry of all these individual stories right. all of which are really interesting right and, and that it, gold documentary did, and then what happened to him since then was He's, he has since passed. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, I don't know if we but, talked about it. Yeah, because he's in a documentary, we can talk about him in the present tense there. Mm-hmm. But, you know, outside the documentary, you know, we, always want, we always want to talk about Jay Gold. Yeah. We'll talk about him in the past tense. But um, it's cool that he kind of dove into that. And are you trying to do any of that in your stand-up comedy to kind of dry, you know, d- dive into individual stories? Or is it pretty much Ethan Victor's kind of autobiography that you're trying to get into? I think it's a little bit of both. Okay. I think that through talking about myself, I try to open up sort of my feelings to other people and validate them either through being closed off like you said you know (laughs) you don't want you were happy that she didn't know your last name or something like that that's somehow cool it's that identifying factor though of like if i'm happy if i'm comfortable enough to talk about my mishaps and my mistakes that are funny in life then hopefully somebody else can relate to them yeah um and i think that you know, being being in, I've gotten into a lot of very bizarre situations. Okay. <laughs> in what kind um, of general sense? Like what, you know, it, it, is it because, you know, when you moved into New York, you find yourself, you know, being more adventurous because you had to survive and it's then when you encountered all these bizarre situations? I think it's just growing up where I did and like being fortunate enough to like, to kind of have access once you're 16 in LA I think like you have access or once somebody has a car yeah and I I think it's incredibly a point of privilege on my end to be able to say that but like we were just I just go out and like do things and that's (laughs) like I think that 
I, one of the one of the, the things that I like really try to live by is like never saying no. Obviously within reason. That's but cool. Like, yeah. Just you know, if somebody wanted to go to a house party wherever it was, I would go. And like I, you know, I didn't know who it was. I didn't know where we were going. But it's like I think part of that like individuals individualism within the city is like you just get to meet people and you get to yeah. learn and like. And having an open world is beneficial for several things because you're also not in your own head. But um, then you have a full experience that lends itself well to stories on stage. Right. I think that that's, you know, I want to get the most complete view of life. And the only way to do that is kind of by expanding your mind and meeting as many people as humanly possible. Do I love that? Yeah, Blair Dawson said something like that yesterday where she's saying yes to a lot of things. And what I notice is I'm also the chief beneficiary of this because then I get cool comics on here who say yes. I mean, I love it. But it's also, it's kind of a telltale sign that we want to see your set too because it's going to, you're not going to be very funny if you're staying in your room all day. Exactly. I think that that's... (laughs) I, I, people, ha- like, I just want to have the experience. A lot of the time I'll do experiences because I know I'm going to talk about them later. I'm, I won't say, like, <laughs> yeah, What have care. you done recently? What have you said yes to recently that you think turned out in such a way where it might be good for comedy? I think that, well. Oh Put you man. on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> or just anything in recent memory. That's, uh, I think that I had, this is a while ago, but this, well, this is one of my oldest jokes that I, I would say I still keep in my arsenal. Just okay. going to Las Vegas. Um, I'm not, I'm not a, a Vegas person yeah. at all. Um, but I went with like eight guys from college. <laughs> uh, and hijinks ensued. Yeah, it okay. was, it was just, and like the, the experience of like, I always feel like I'm an outsider. Okay. I think that's part of it. So you weren't like, let's get strippers, <laughs> let's get no. hookers, I guess. Yeah. No, that was right. not, that, that was not me. I will say that. <laughs> Um, but it. But there no, was eight, seven other dudes there. Yeah, other we, dudes, were, right? we were <laughs> relatively tame, okay. I would say. Uh, I, I love that most people can say that about themselves in Vegas. It was relatively tame. It was. It was. <laughs> we were relatively tame. <laughs> they, they, I was. I can't necessarily okay. vouch for that. <laughs> so you got to see some things though that made us yeah. way into your act. Yeah, yeah, and I think that that's like. I'm happy about that, though. Yeah. I'm happy that um, obviously, like being safe and you know everything else is like so important. But like the just getting to kind of it, watch as these things happen, and like you may not, as an audience member, you may not necessarily have been to Las Vegas with seven other twenty-four year olds, but you may have been in a in a situation you know, as 48 with six of your friends and you don't feel like you fit in and they're all doing things that you don't necessarily agree with. And that's where we identify. There's always the dumb guy in the group that everybody can relate to. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, everybody has the dumb guy with the bright ideas. Like, how does the dumbest guy in my group have the brightest ideas? Exactly. And how do they lead to to such hilarity? And then when you're telling stories like this, you're doing so at whispers sometimes. Sometimes. And they can find that via your social media, like meaning you're also doing other shows. Kind of where else are you playing? Uh, really, bar shows all over the city. Uh, this Sunday, I'm going to be at the stand uh, doing a storytelling show. Oh, cool. um, and is there other storytellers on there? Yeah. Okay. So we have I'm, uh, Sam Mazzani and Joe Perot produce a show called Sorry Not Sorry. Oh, cool. um, and they, they have, I'm blanking on who else is on it right now, but they have other oh, great storytellers. Uh, they have great, yeah, comics yeah. who are just talking about kind of things that they have done that they aren't necessarily proud of. And so um, is that taking some of your, like, um, you know, I know stories can be funny if you just, you know, remember to, you know, punch it up with jokes. Yeah. But how would, yeah, how do you select, is it, are you just selecting, like, you know, how does a normal, you know, a comic who's not always storytelling pick that perfect story for the storytelling show? Is it one of their only stories where it's just, uh, you know, it's a longer narrative bit that has a lot of jokes in it? Yeah, I think that would be, for me, that's that's kind of like what I go for. I think I try to write my jokes as stories anyway. Oh, okay. I, like looking at like set up punch and like how do I take these menial sentences and turn them into a joke. Like how an organized I, bit with several jokes. In yeah. There. Okay. So I think that this is the story that I assume I'm going to be telling uh, that I, I'm probably going to go with. Yeah. I haven't quite figured that out yet, but is um, – I want to turn it into a bit. It's just a very long story. Oh, and okay. so whenever... Just be your opportunity to find out where the laughs are in the audience. Right. Okay. And I usually, like, when I ha- when I do tell stories uh, or when I do this sort of stuff, this is the one that I go with just because, like, I know it's funny. Okay. Um, but it, like, premise-wise, at least. Um, 
it was the first time I, I ran into my ex-girlfriend after we oh, hadn't spoken. Oh, um, good. So, good. so, and if they want to see that story, it's at the stand, which this Sunday, so a week from today. This Sunday. Okay. okay. And yeah. what, what time? Uh, seven o'clock. Okay. And so you can see him there, but also everywhere online. Oh, and then whispers, Upper West Side, that in the be, streets again. Ninety uh, Fourth and Broadway were. Okay. Uh, February 27th, last Thursday of each month oh, cool. uh, at 8 o'clock. So yeah. that's coming up, too. You're, you're pretty uh, stacked for the end of the month. I will see, you know. Yeah. I, <laughs> and then, um, so that's called, Is it? does it have a, a name or is it just Whispers? I mean, does your show kind of have its own little yeah. name that people can find on the Whispers calendar if it's there? Yeah, Slam Junk Comedy. Slam Junk Comedy. Yeah. I love that so much. Ethan Victor, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me.